Um, I just want to tackle a few supporter questions before we wrap up. Um, and there's obviously a lot of questions that we had. I've picked a couple about DLSS. Uh, this one from Peter Karadimus. Hello, crew. Will the Nintendo Switch 2 be capable of using the new transformer model of DLSS recently revealed by NVIDIA? Mm -hmm. And uh, if you saw our DLSS 4 video, you'll see what that actually means, which is essentially that um, NVIDIA is basically um, thinks they've taken their old DLSS as far as it can go, and they're using a much more complex form of machine learning in order to produce far superior results. I mean, Oliver, I remember sharing the B-roll with you, and you were quite impressed by uh, the Transformer model. Immediately, yeah. Uh, the, the, Mm -hmm. Yeah. The question is whether it could be used on Switch 2. And obviously it could be, right? Because it's got tensor cores. It uses the Ampere architecture. Ampere will be using, uh, is being used in Switch 2 rather. The question is really, DLSS in its standard form with the convolutional neural network is already quite computationally expensive. And the transformer model will be more computationally expensive. So whether it's used or not is basically going to be down to whether the ability to scale from even lower resolutions outweighs that cost. That's my, my thought on it. But obviously we've got patents from Nintendo talking about actually producing a lightweight model of DLSS, which yeah. is presumably compared to the existing convolutional neural network model. Uh, what do you reckon there, Oliver? Yeah, I mean, NVIDIA is quoting it to us as being four times more compute ex intensive than the old CNN model. So I don't really know if that's compatible with the Switch 2 necessarily. Not in terms of, obviously it's compatible on some level because uh, it, it can work yeah. with the architecture. It's the practical use of but it. But is it, yeah, is it practical? Uh, I'd suspect that Nintendo would probably be looking down the path of, can we get a lightweight version of DLSS working even if we're compromising <laughs> yeah. on quality? Rather than going down the approach of we want to maximize quality and use this model that, keep in mind, is really designed for more modern GPUs that are in laptops, in desktops, right? We're not talking about something like a super low power, two generation old Ampere mobile <laughs> GPU, basically yes. the equivalent thereof. So yeah, I suspect probably not. Um, but I mean, who knows? Maybe if there's like a super lightweight transformer model that they could use. Maybe that's what they're going to use, but I, I'm not necessarily seeing the link there at the moment. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I am tempted to get hold of another 2050 laptop to uh, <laughs> put this uh, transformer model through its paces on there. Well, I guess we'll see whether that happens or not. This question from MG Subby, I basically want you to confirm or adjust your take on what DLSS could do in the Switch 2. I primarily play my Switch docked, and to say it doesn't look great on a 4K TV is an understatement. My biggest hope for the Switch 2 is looking decent on a 4K output. I think it's the sentiment we all share, right, John? Um, yes. Do you think with the Mario Kart reveal there that we actually gained any evidence? I don't think we did. That no. The 4K quite, output would quite, be any better. Quite the opposite. That was a 1080p upload, and this footage was never full screen, but aliasing was still visible, which is not a great sign, I would say. Yeah. Uh, but it's also, that, I mean, that's just Nintendo, man. For whatever reason, they, they're they just addicted to this no AA look that they go <laughs> yes. for, right? Like, they just can't mm -hmm. stop. Like, there's plenty of games on Switch that have decent anti-aliasing, but Nintendo yes. games are not one of them. <laughs> And the few times they try, they put freaking FSR1 in there. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, in terms of confirming or adjusting your take, again, I'm just going to point you towards the T239 video because my opinion hasn't really changed. Assuming they're using the convolutional neural network, which is uh, used in the PC version, of which there is no you know, confirmation whatsoever, it seemed to be very, very usable for upscaling 540p to 1080p. And I think that, that looks kind of okay. You can get a look uh, at that video and see how DLSS looks and indeed how it looks on a 4K screen because uh, it's upscaled to 4K, that video, I believe. But until we actually see uh, Switch 2 with DLSS being used in a game, there's not really too much more we can uh, we can comment on. Um, this question from Anxiously Chronoed figured, Hi DF Crew, can we expect Nintendo to release free performance patches for old Switch games to run better on Switch 2? The fact they mention and show Switch games running on Switch 2 in their revealed trailer gives some hope they won't be releasing paid remasters. <laughs> or have I inhaled too much copium? 
<laughs> Cheers, exclamation Ooh. point. There's certainly been a lot of hopium and copium surrounding Switch 2 over the months and indeed years. Um, John, what do you think about this? Free performance patches. Um, um, you know, on the one hand, um, the fact that they've got uh, a digital library now that persists across generations means that the concept of remastering prior generation games is not really on the table anymore. But on the flip side, patching them certainly is on the table, you'd think, right? It is indeed on the table. But this, this creates a predicament for Nintendo because they have indeed, as they suggested, released many games from prior platforms on the Switch. But it made sense there because the Wii U specifically, where they've been pulling most of them from, was a failure. Uh, and a lot of people didn't play those games. And so they were able to just bring them over while developing other titles alongside them. That's kind of gone at this point. They've they've used everything up. And I think the audiences would not react kindly to re-releasing again, taking Switch generation titles and releasing new versions. And I'm not sure Nintendo's going to take that approach either. And like you say, now that patching's possible, they might they might offer it. But it's hard. It's man, it's really difficult to say. Like I just mm -hmm. like just knowing Nintendo can you really see Nintendo being like, yeah, we're gonna put out a Tears of the Kingdom patch that lets it run at like 60 FPS or something. Like just like that. <laughs> like Nintendo has never once in their entire history really done anything like that before. Yeah. It's not but to say they do won't expect, do it, but yeah. yeah, you do expect cross gen titles though, right? Yeah, I think we'll get cross-gen titles for sure. And it'll just be like before. With it. And I, I don't think it'll be a case of like buy one, get them everywhere. Uh, it'll it'll <laughs> yeah. be split uh, almost certainly, I'd imagine. Especially given okay. the limitations on cart space and the cost that that entails, right? Uh, but I don't know, man. This, 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 we're going into a weird zone here. Nintendo hasn't really done anything like this before. Like, this Enough. has been established now for a while, but compared to other consoles, Nintendo hasn't had a generation where they shifted over in a way where it's very compatible with the previous gen in a way that it's integrated into the new OS, right? Mm -hmm. Like, when they did Wii compatibility on Wii U, for instance, or a lot of the other handheld stuff, it was always, like, a separate-off thing. Like, oh, you bring up the old Wii OS, and you're in Wii mode now, or even with GBA games, like when you're playing GBA games on like a DS or you you don't have access to all the functions of the hardware. It kind of locks you into yeah. different modes and such. And that's traditionally what they've always done. And so this is the first time we actually have a scenario where you could be playing natively Switch games on the Switch 2 directly from the Switch 2 OS. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Thoughts, Oliver? Um, well, we do have a little bit of context here in that... Nintendo was apparently demoing a, a high-resolution, high-frame-rate version of Breath of the Wild right. on Switch 2 development hardware. I, I'm, I kind of yes. am in the direction... I mean, I think there are a lot of things that are a little bit tricky here because uh, I, this does not seem very much like Nintendo, but I think that what Nintendo could do is they might offer paid conversions to a Switch 2 version. I wouldn't be surprised if mm. they were to go through their older library release full-fledged Switch 2 versions of kind of classic titles like Breath of the Wild and um, get those games running in good form on Switch 2 and then offer some kind of fee for a conversion to that, maybe not a full price. I think that might be a reasonable right. way for them to balance those S priorities. Similar to the Sony $10 upgrade fee. Yeah, similar to that upgrade fee for titles like uh, Horizon, Forbidden, uh, Horizon Zero Dawn to Horizon Zero Dawn Remastered, right? Those kinds of upgrade mm -hmm. titles or, or The Last of Us Part Two, for instance, The Last of Us Part Two Remastered. I could expect something similar here, um, but it is a tricky thing to tread. I just suspect that Nintendo will be in a position, especially over the first few years of the Switch's, Switch 2's life cycle, where some of those older titles will look very attractive to get a remastering treatment and to possibly bring people uh, on board to switch to in a way that maybe new titles would not. I suspect that will pro prove too attractive a prospect to just leave in the dust. But I also think you can't right. really sell a new $70 game to people who played that game seven years ago. So I think there are some things yeah. that need to balance there. I mean, if you think about the strategy behind Sony's $10 upgrade fee, it's pretty straightforward. They want to view their library of games as being essentially evergreen, 
And one might consider that uh, Nintendo's games are far more evergreen than the likes of, you know, Horizon Zero Dawn. Um, and the way to continue that evergreen trend is to basically upgrade the games to run and look better on the new hardware. So, yeah, there's there's pros and cons to this particular discussion, I think. But it certainly would mm. be a new direction for Nintendo. But if they can't, you know, remaster everything from their prior libraries anymore, this might be their preferred route forward. We just don't really know at this point. 